Hello and welcome to this video which is intended to highlight how the Arduino IDE and environment slows down your development, teaches you bad habits and how to improve your software development speed and write like a pro. So the good points about the Arduino is it's a great way to start writing code for microcontrollers like the venerable 80 mega 328p used in the Arduino Uno and Nano with loads of easy to understand examples organized into categories, it makes it easy to get started. Changing from an Arduino Uno to a Mega when you need more I.O. or resources is as easy as a drop down menu. Even moving to an ARM based platform is pretty straightforward. I learned embedded programming by using the Arduino IDE and environment, and this helped me land my first engineering job. The bad points of Arduino. It's great for starting out, but it can quickly become limiting. The most annoying thing I find with the Arduino IDE is the lack of autocomplete. What is autocomplete? Instead of having to remember to copy and, play in and paste every variable or function you use, autocomplete allows you to just use the first three or four letters, and then you get a drop down of all the options that match. This is very important for classes where you may not remember all the methods or members or their names. The Arduino IDE has a terrible search. Finding everything in your code where you have uh, used a certain variable or function is very important for debugging and understanding your own code the next day when you've forgotten everything. The search functionality in Arduino highlights each occurrence of the search term one by one. Um, and iterates through them. Most IDEs search by showing a list of occurrences of your search term, allowing you to go straight there by clicking the line and easily seeing the context in which it's used and how many times. Uh, so the bad habits that Arduino teaches you. Arduino encourages you not to, to create classes and instead to separate code out into multiple tabs which Arduino just appends to one another. This can produce very hard to solve bugs where one tab doesn't know about the functions in another tab and therefore can't use them. So no structure. Human, ba human brains are great at solving problems, but not, not so good at holding lots of information all at once, or at least mine isn't. In any moderately complex code project, it becomes important to structure your code well so that it is easy to break up the complexity into different functions and classes, each responsible for a specific job. As covered later, Arduino doesn't encourage this important structure in your code. Reliance on libraries. Arduino is great because of all the libraries that come with it or that can be installed. This is great for quickly creating a project that uses an LCD, reads from a complex sensor and saves that data to an SD card. The problem comes when you can't find a library that does what you need, or that library has bugs or doesn't do everything you need. Libraries are great, and I certainly don't suggest you go and write your own FAT32 and SD card library, no matter how good you are. In industry, it can often be valuable to write your own libraries of code for common functions or specific sensors that you might use across multiple projects. Lack of debugging. The Arduino IDE does not support any kind of debugging and using serial.print statements is not debugging. A proper debugger like GDB allows you to single step um, one line at a time through your code, insert breakpoints to stop the code execution at, and inspect variables, memory and even registers. This can be critical for quickly debugging code. Implicit variable sizes. Arduino encourages the use of variable types such as int and long on an 8-bit platform, such as the AVR-based UNO, an int is a 16-bit um, signed, that's positive and negative, integer. However, on a 32-bit platform, such as an ARM, an int is 32 bits. This can lead to very hard to find bugs when moving to a different platform. In industry, the use of int is highly discouraged for this reason. On an 8-bit platform, using a 16 or 32-bit integer has a performance penalty. So if you're writing a for loop, which only needs to iterate over 100 items, using an int is wasteful if a byte would suffice. Explicit variables such as uint8 underscore t or uint16 underscore t are better as they are always 8 or 16 bits long as specified. 
there's no way to easily make classes. When using C++, classes are essential to structure and isolate your code. Arduino makes it harder to create classes and doesn't provide a nice easy way to do so like most other IDs do. Difficult to collaborate. Most of the time when you're using Arduino, you're probably just writing code for yourself. If you want to collaborate with other engineers, however, it can start to become a bit of a pain when you're using libraries other than what comes included with Arduino. This is because you have to manually install each library you want to use. When working with others or in industry, this can quickly become a problem because each engineer has to manually install each library and make sure the versions are the same. It can be difficult to navigate large projects. When working on larger projects with lots of classes, it can be difficult to navigate around. The two main features that I miss compared to other IDEs are the ability to control click on a function call and then be straight, taken straight to the code for that function and the left sidebar. Most IDEs arrange the project by using a sidebar on the left of the screen showing all of the source files making it, making it easy to open and navigate around. It's hard to automate building. Due to the difficulty of using third-party libraries and the complexity that Arduino hides from you, it can be difficult to automate building code. Why would you want to automate building code? Suppose you're working on a large project with other engineers. It can be advantageous to automatically build and maybe test the code every time someone commits a change to the code. This can be valuable to stop, to find and stop the age-old it works on my machine problems hiding complexity. The great thing about Arduino is that it hides a lot of the complexity and lets you just get on and write code. The bad thing about Arduino is it hides a lot of the complexity so you don't know what's going on under the hood and therefore can't easily learn about it. In industry it's important to understand how all of this works, to solve problems with the build process and to modify it for your needs, such as specifying where libraries are. So a good IDE should provide autocomplete, as we covered earlier. Um, so a good IDE should provide a good autocomplete mechanism, saving the programmer remembering exactly the name of the functional variable. It should be easy to create classes. Classes should be easy to create, usually from a menu option, allowing you to specify the class name, the file name, and, the, and if the class inherits functionality from another class, there should be a good find. As mentioned earlier, Good IDE will allow you to search for an instance of a variable or function easily, providing you with a list of occurrences and to easily navigate that list, as well as easily rename instances of a variable or function. It should help to automate building. Making it easy to automate building code can be very useful for large projects with multiple engineers working on it. This can be done by using command line utilities and can be paired with an automated build system such as Jenkins or Bitbucket's pipelines. It should be easy to reproduce code. To allow engineers to easily work on code, it is important that the exact same code is produced when different engineers on different computers, even using different operating systems, check out and try to build that code. To do this, any libraries used must be the exact same version and downloading those libraries should be automated. Ideally, libraries should be handled by your source control systems, such as Git or SVN, or by using a package manager. Debugging. Using a debugger is sometimes the only way to find a bug, single stepping through the code or inspecting all the variables used. This requires integration with the IDE, as well as a hardware debugger, such as a JTAG interface. So what other options are there available? Well, there's Platform IO, there's Atmel Studio, made by Atmel, now microchip. There's Eclipse with various plugins to make it easier to configure, or you could create your own toolchain. So Platform IO. Platform IO is a great system for developing embedded code. I've used it myself in industry and for hobby coding and highly recommend it for both hobby and commercial development, and it's free. Some of the features it provides are a unified debugger that works across multiple architectures, <coughs> cross-platform build system, works on Mac, Linux, and Windows, an intelligent autocomplete, <coughs> although that depends on the ID that you were using with it, 
automatic download and version control of third party libraries, automatic download of the tool chain for building code, first time building for ARM, Platform IO will automatically download all of the tools required. Command line options and utilities for automated build systems. It works with most IDEs, but works best with VS Code and also Qt Creator, my favorite IDE. And all of this is configured from a text file. There's Atmel Studio, which is created by Atmel, now microchip and it is specifically made for their 8-bit AVR and 32-bit ARM architectures. It has support for all the hardware debugging tools, a great AVR simulator, and lots of libraries to drive the hardware. Some of the features are, as mentioned, great debugging support, great autocomplete. The IDE itself is based on Visual Studio, which is a good IDE, but Windows only, unfortunately. Many example projects and libraries are available. Simulation of lots of the hardware and how it works. <clears throat> Great documentation is built in, and it's easy to import existing Arduino projects. So you can use Eclipse, which is a popular and widely used IDE that can be configured to write and build code for just about any language, and this is a pro and a con. Eclipse can be somewhat difficult to use, however, due to all the options available. Plugins or IDEs based on Eclipse, such as Schlober, can help the build process. But I found Schlober to be unreliable, quite clunky, and does not provide much in the way of debugging or support for automated build systems. So you can create a custom toolchain. If you really want, you can create your own build environment using pretty much any IDE you want, even just a text editor, by using the free toolchains available like AVR GCC. Some really large projects may benefit from this approach as it allows complete control over the whole process, but it also means you have to do pretty much everything yourself. For a hobbyist, I would not recommend this approach, although it can be great to learn how it all works. So, Arduino is great for getting started, but it can quickly become limiting as you progress. I would highly recommend starting out with platform IO and VS code as soon as possible, as it can be harder to convert or import existing projects once they get bigger. The time saving from using a good IDE will soon pay for itself in terms of the time getting set up with platform IO, as it is quite straightforward. So do you have a better alternative that you know about? If you do, I'd love to know about it. Please comment down below if you have any suggestions or maybe there's a topic you'd like me to cover. And if you found this video useful, then please like and subscribe to see future content. Thank you very much.